Hello, fellow horror fiends, and welcome to The Horror Within Me, a podcast dedicated to the world of horror. Join us each week as our host explores a new horrifying topic from the many realms of horror, such as film, television, and more, and returns to tell us his terrifying revelations. So sit back, relax, and get ready to face the horrors within. Hey, and welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Horror Within Me. I am your host, Eric, and we are going to take another spooktacular journey today, and I'm very excited for this week's episode. Now, if you listened last week um, to the Midsummer episode, we I had said that this week we're going to do another A24 film, which was going to be X, but... This is going to be postponed. This week is not going to be about that movie. Um, I've changed paths for certain reasons that I'll explain in a moment. But this week, we are going to talk about the highly controversial Netflix series, Resident Evil. Now, this is such a hot topic right now with everything that's going on and everyone really giving it so much hate. Um, I needed to watch the, the show, not because of the, you know, the mainstream of it and how everything's going on, but mostly because... I'm a diehard Resident Evil fan. I've been playing it since the original game came out on the PlayStation back in the 90s. So I have been disappointed in movies in the past, and some I liked, some I didn't. Uh, I can appreciate all works, but I needed to, to form my own opinion for this show, and so I watched it. But before we jump into uh, the world of Resident Evil and the Umbrella Corporation, just want to touch up on a few things that we were discussing as I said last week, I was talking to you guys about Monster Mania Con 50. That's going to be in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and that uh, it's my birthday week, and unfortunately I wouldn't be able to go. That has changed. I have gotten a ticket for Saturday, August 13th, which is super exciting. Um, so I will be there, and there's going to be so many people from movies. Uh, I named a few last week, and you know, just look up the website and Monster Con dot monster mania you can find them on facebook you'll see everyone's going to be at monster con 50 in cherry hill sort of a scream reunion as i mentioned so i'm very excited about uh about attending this is my first ever um horror show con thing at all i've never been to one um and so i'm very stoked to to be there so if anyone is in new jersey listening and if you're going to be there um if you recognize me or recognize my voice come say hi <laughs> so Yes, um, that is this week, or no, I'm sorry, in August, but yes, yeah, so, I'm so excited, I'm losing track of thought. Okay, so, anyway, we're going to go into the the episode, uh, series of Resident Evil. So, those of you who are listening to this episode and watched Resident Evil or, or, or clicked on this episode because the title has Resident Evil in it, I'm going to assume that you're Resident Evil fans of some sort, either the movies with Mila Jovovich or the actually the Capcom games from the 90s until today. You know, we've reached the most recent entry in it being the Resident Evil 8 or Resident Evil uh, Village. So, very long time coming to talk about this. I've been so excited to mix my passion for gaming and movies and TV shows. So, with that, I'm going to do a special trivia we're going to call it Terror Trivia, and it's going to be Resident Evil themed. And so the trivia question for this episode, now if you're first time tuning in, what we do is we give a trivia question in the beginning, and then we give the answer at the end. And this is for my Resident Evil fans out there. And the trivia question is, in the original Resident Evil games, what item is needed to save your, type, to save your game with the typewriter? Repeat it. In the original Resident Evil games, what item is needed to save your game with the typewriter? And I will give you guys the answer at the end of the episode. And now we're going to jump right in because there's a lot to talk about. We're going to talk about some of the games. I'm going to avoid as much spoilers as possible, but when I'm in terms of speaking of the games, uh, I'm not going to hold back on talking about the storylines and things that go in there because it's it's it's... It's within the universe of the games, but it's its own separate entity and its own story within the world. So I feel comfortable being able to discuss the games and the reasoning 
forming my review and my opinion of the show. So let's start off with the synopsis like we always do, right? Resident Evil synopsis goes as, Nearly three decades after the discovery of the T-Virus, an outbreak reveals the Umbrella Corporation's dark secrets based on the horror franchise. Okay. Very minimal synopsis. I mean, people that aren't fans of Resident Evil, but I mean, let's be honest, if you're going to click on Resident Evil, most people will be fans. I, or you're just into zombies, but most people are going to be fans. And so we're going to go over the top cast, okay? We have Ella Belinska, Belinska, she's Jade Wesker. Tamara Smart, who's young Jade Wesker. Sienna Agudong, who is young Billy Wesker. Adeline Rudolph, who is Billy Wesker, adult Billy Wesker. Paola Nunez as Evelyn Marcus. Lance Reddick as Albert Wesker. And Connor Gazzotti as Simon. Now, there are top cast that we're going to go in and out of and it was developed by andrew dab who if your name sounds familiar he wrote for the tv show supernatural so that's super cool i've never watched supernatural my husband did and recently like a year or so ago finished it from beginning to end and i think there's like 15 16 seasons of it and it's something i do want to watch but i by the time i wanted to get into it it was overwhelmed because it was already into like season nine or ten i'm gonna i felt so far behind that i just just was intimidated to even go in and watch it. So I heard good things about it. I mean, it was on the WB or whatever it's called now. Um, I remember when it came out. I don't remember the actor's names. I know the one guy that was the brother in it. He was in the Friday the 13th remake. So definitely a show that I, I, I know it has a very loyal fan base. So I would love to check it out. It's very my speed, I think. So, yes. Yeah, so that's Andrew Dabb. And now... If anyone recognized the Ella Belinska uh, name, she starred in the 2019 version of Charlie's Angels as Jane Kano. Now, I did not see that either. I did not watch the, new, the 2019 Charlie's Angels with Kristen Stewart. Um, I watched the original, not the original originals, but the original movies with uh, Drew Barrymore, Lucy Liu, and Cameron Diaz. I liked them. They were fun. Um, and then, obviously, we have Lance Reddick, who is known for his roles in John Wick as and... He was in Oz and Godzilla vs. Kong. I saw Godzilla vs. Kong. I don't remember who he was in it. And I did not see John Wick. And I don't want any hate for not seeing John Wick. I don't want any hate at all. Okay? <laughs> One day I will watch it. I know that there are awesome movies as well. And I like Keanu Reeves. You know, I liked him in Speed, The Matrix, you know, <laughs> Bill and Ted. <laughs> you know, I like him. So... Those are our top cast. There's some little people, some names that you might recognize from other titles. Now, I looked into the other cast that I had mentioned, and I couldn't really find anything that I would have recognized, even without seeing. So um, go ahead and look up the Wikipedia or IMDb page and see if you know them from anything else. Or if you recognize the name, or if I mispronounced it, correct me, because I am terrible at pronunciation, apparently. So, I say so a lot, don't I? Wow, I'm going to have to fix that. We're going to go to the IMDb rating, and this is so sad. The IMDb rating for Resident Evil Netflix is a 3.8 out of 10. And, I mean, if anyone out there is following the the social medias or reviews, I mean, it's just, I'm like I said, if you're in groups for horror movies, I'm just seeing so much hate for this for this show. And it's just, it, it honestly deterred me from watching it at first, because I'm like, here we go, because I went to see... Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City, when that was released about a year or so ago, I can't keep up with time anymore, so I don't know if it was last month or three years ago, but I went to go see it when it was released, and because I was super excited that it was going to be more horror-based, based with characters from the games, and it had Jill, and it was set with within the world of uh, Resident Evil 1 and 2 with Claire and Leon, and I thought it was going to be super fun, and I'm not going to bash it, I'm not going to go too far into it, but it was a little disappointing <clears throat> with with some of the effects and the acting and the direction they chose. Uh, if you're going to create a movie based within the actual games, follow the game storyline and bring it to life. And they didn't do that completely, in my opinion, especially with the character of Leon. And if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. And it was disappointing. Fix it. <laughs> okay. Back to the Netflix series. So, there's that so again. You know what, just take take a shot of whatever you're drinking or whatever it is. Whenever I say so, have a little fun with it. I don't know. Uh, 
the Rotten Tomatoes website scored it a 49%, which is generous, I think, for, for Rotten Tomatoes. And this is, I think, just the critic reviews. It's like a 26% user review. So that's more along the lines of the 3.8 from IMDb and, and, and basically the consensus that I'm seeing across the internet. Like, it's, it, it, it's just not good reviews at all. It came out and it just bombed in everyone's opinions, apparently. But let's talk about the world of this this entry of Resident Evil. So it's set in two timelines. We have a current timeline of 2022, where it's where we have young um, Jade and Billy Wesker. And if you're recognizing the name Wesker, obviously, Wesker is from the video game franchise. He was in the first Resident Evil as a double agent for stars. Stars was the uh, special tactic. So I can't remember, and I'm supposed to be a diehard fan, but it was the police force, and it was like their SWAT team almost, basically, that was sent out to the Arkway Mountains to the mansion to just, to look for the Bravo team, and that's where everything happens. But we find out at the end of that game that he was working with Umbrella, who is the corporation that has invented the T-Virus and has been testing it, and uh, that's how the outbreak happened, and everyone turned into zombies and monsters and blah, blah, blah. So... There it is. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, anyway. Wesker. We know the name. And the first thing I do want to point out is Lance Rhetoric as Wesker. In the video game franchise, everyone is Caucasian. They're white. I mean, this is what it was. And it's just... And Lance Rhetoric is African American. He's black. So, I, I thought that was a very good move to make. Because... Back in those days, even like it sounds like back in those days, but I mean, honestly, it's like 30 years. It's been a long time. Everything, there wasn't a lot of minorities in mainstream. And I love to see the corrective actions taken, especially in fictional, like anyone could be anything. It doesn't have to follow what they were before. Let's, 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 let's make it some diversity. So I like that. And I'm not going to get too spoily. You're probably wondering how Wesker ties into this, the kids, it's something you have to look, you have to watch. So yeah, we have the two timelines of 2022 and then 2036 with adult Jade Wesker in this, no, post-apocalyptic world. 2022, there's not a lot of, there's not, it's not anything has hap not happened yet. Obviously what happened in the video games had been already done and over with because we're talking what, uh, 1998 for the original three, um, Resident Evil timelines, 97, 98, where they blew up Raccoon City after the major outbreak from, from that. So we are now in a new Raccoon City and it's very white and like gray. And I mean that like in the atmosphere, the homes, everything's very symmetrical and the same. Um, in 2036 is very apocalyptic and, uh, you know, it, very new Resident Evil movies with, with Alice. You know how that is. Most zombie movies where it just, like, looks like the world went to shit a long time ago. <laughs> but they... I like that the, the two... The two timelines. I thought that was interesting. Um, I also liked the fact that they didn't... Like, they brought in a character from the universe, but they made their own characters. Like, Evelyn Marcus is the daughter of Marcus, who started Umbrella and, and all this stuff. She's not an actual character from the games, but Marcus, the name Marcus is. Wesker's the character from the games, but Jade and Billy are not from the game. So, they branched their own story, and I know a lot of people were upset with it, but then when you think about it, for me... I was more upset about watching Claire and Leon in Welcome to Raccoon City not portray themselves the way that the games did and to to, to go off that storyline, whereas meeting a new character within the realm is not unheard of. Look at the new Resident Evil trilogy that's coming on right now with Resident Evil 7 and 8 with Ethan Winters. We didn't know him, and it was the first first person. Like It's not uncommon for the world of Resident Evil to, re to introduce new characters into the world of Resident Evil, tie them in together. We have Chris Redfield in the new ones um, from you know, with Ethan, and there's a whole different thing. There are different viruses. So I think it was a smart move on Netflix and the writers to to create new storylines and characters within this whole universe. And I personally think that they did a 
very good job, and I'm going to tell you why. Without giving too many spoilers, I'm going to spoil some of the things just to get you a little hyped up to go and watch it. But I wanted to know what the budget was of this show, because I was impressed with the effects and the cinematography. I mean, I think that they really did such a good job immersing you into the world of Resident Evil on screen, live action. There's music that, that I think there's one point where you can kind of hear the save room music. And if you know what I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> they do the Moonlight Sonata on the piano, which was a big major part of the original Resident Evil. When you're in the mansion and you have to get a key, there's a you find the music sheets and you had to play it on the piano and then the door opens. Like I thought that was cool. But the best thing that I thought, the best thing was the effects of the of the monsters they looked amazing like so i couldn't find a budget online all i could find online it was an article from slashfilms.com that dab said that they had an unlimited blood budget so <laughs> that's awesome you know if you're going to be a resident evil you know production and you have an unlimited blood budget that's got to be a lot of fun and in the article i think he went on to say that they had to restrain themselves and not be too eccentric and over the top with it because they still wanted it to feel you know somewhat realistic in a way but you know blowing zombies up and things like that and people being attacked like they're having a limited blood budget goes a long way in the resident evil world but a couple um a couple of the people that will pop up that you will notice from the games if you're a diehard fan and you played the original. Now, when I say diehard fans, I didn't play the the sub games as much. I didn't do any of the first person Resident Evils. I didn't get through Revelations. I played the main entries. I played all of the you know Resident Evil one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Resident Evil Zero. I did play Resident Evil Outbreak. Resident Evil Outbreak File 2, which I don't know if anybody remembers that if you're a gamer and you played them. I freaking loved Resident Evil Outbreak. I was always like the girl in the, the, the maroon pantsuit reporter. She was my favorite girl. And you have to like work together with people. Bring that back. Now that we're the age we're in with online multiplayer, let's bring back Resident Evil Outbreak and like do it across like uh, cross platform thing. That would be super fun. <laughs> I digress. Ugh. But some of the things that were amazing to me is um the crocodile from resident evil 2 isn't it um obviously we see the tyrant but it's uh, i don't know uh it's brief i'll put it that way um the liquors there's an amazing scene in my opinion where characters are in like a subway setting and it's very dark and it's like the flashing lights and there's like liquors everywhere and i thought it was so visually like satisfying and they they did such a good job also i don't know i feel like it was but i could be wrong the the digger bug thing that was in resident evil 3 the grave digger that you fight in the cemetery as jill i believe it looked just like it the giant worm thing was in it and it was so awesomely done as well um another nod that they did from resident evil 4 and 5 which terrified me because i don't do chainsaws very well but the chainsaw guy that kind of gave me jason Voorhees friday the 13th 2 vibes with the sack thing over his head and with the chainsaw he was in it for a moment i thought that was so cool they did so many nods and they did such a well way of tying it all together that i'm starting to feel you know confused at this point it's there's, you know there's only eight episodes about an hour long and i'm i'm getting through these episodes and i'm like why do people hate this show? I mean, I think, and I took, like I said, I follow the stories. I follow the characters. I'm a, I am played Resident Evil 1 and 4 over 10 times. I'm one of those. Like, I will, I, I'm like a walking strategy guide for the GameCube version of Resident Evil. I can go back in there, probably do it without my eyes closed. But I'm like, why are people so mad? They're like, it's terrible. It's just a, if you're, if it's a, you're into just zombies, that's fine. But the teen drama aspect is ridiculous. So I'm thinking, is it? Maybe that's my problem. Because I liked, like, you know, Sabrina, the new Sabrina. I liked Riverdale. Like, I don't know. I don't think the teen, I thought it was really cool to have the twin aspect to it. And I didn't, I didn't hate the, the storyline at all. 
I I pretty much was enjoying it. Um, and then and then, <laughs> but back. Let me backtrack. The person I completely forgot to mention that they 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 bring in speaking of the GameCube Resident Evil that they wasn't in the original but was in the remake, Lisa fucking Trevor. I love Lisa Trevor. There's this like the scene at the end when you finally fight her in the game and her mother's in the casket or something like that. And the whole goal is like you can't really kill her. You got to like push the casket over the side of the cave cliff. And when it does, the cut scene comes and she has like she's like Mara! and then like just dive bombs and kills herself after the casket. It's a bittersweet kind of sad, like weird monster. She's shown, which is so cool. I was like the fanboy in me was like, it's Lisa Trevor. <laughs> She's not like a big part in it. It's no, it's no, sorry, that's a spoiler. But there's so many little eggs and nods to the show and to the games that tie it together. I thought it was very well done. But now, now is the point where I'm going to get into my, uh, let me flip my page here because I have my notes. <laughs> um, this is my issue. As I said, I'm getting through, and I'm like, I don't know why people are hating me so much. And the reasons that I was reading they were hating, I wasn't hating for it. I'm going to tell you what my issue is. Because I have I have issues, and they start at episode 6, 7, and 8. I don't know if they, they were too ambitious, but I don't feel that they were able to tie up what they started. They took, they, for lack of a better analysis, they bit off more than they could chew. God, that was so bad pun. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't finished. I understand that you have to leave room for another season, which, based off the ratings that we're getting, I don't see that happening. So now we have a eight episode show called Resident Evil that I don't think we're ever going to get another episode for another season. But they didn't tie anything together. There's so many unanswered questions. I'm. I'm, and it's not in a good way. I mean. If you're going to open the plot up to a whole other world, which is what they kind of do at the end of it, there's just a lot of things that nothing is answered. Nothing is answered from 2022 or 2036. And then there's decisions that are starting to be made within episodes 6, 7, and 8 that make zero fucking sense. Like, zero sense. I'm confused. Why is she doing this or saying this? Or, and it doesn't make sense. And then there's a point, like a literal point, that a character makes a comment to the other character in 2036, right? That goes against what we see in 2022. And I, to the point where I'm like, did they <laughs> did they have alternate versions of these episodes that they fucking forgot and mixed together? Because what we just saw completely contradicts what they say in the future. Like, it made zero sense. <laughs> And it's infuriating because now I'm starting to understand why people are going fucking nuts. But not I'm going nuts over other reasons because I thought it was like decent. The first five episodes, I'm like, oh my god, there's a, there's a typewriter, there's a this, there's a that. Oh, the atmosphere was perfect. They even like have a scene where, like where they end up on a boat. I'm like, is this a nod to Revelations? Because like I said, I didn't beat them, but I started like you know the boats, and it was very good. But then I'm thinking with two timelines, eight episodes, only an hour each. You have to be precise and make sure that everything that you're shooting is going to be beneficial to your entire plot and that it's going to tie everything up by the end of season one because this is also very ambitious. There's not much, like, granted, the other uh, Resident Evil movies with Alice did very well, but they were very action-packed. I liked them, but the new Raccoon City, bleh, you know, there's, and Resident Evil is a major franchise. So you can either do very well or you're going to do very fucking bad. There's not a lot of in between. So you should have done this first season as your only season, just in case you don't get renewed. And if you get renewed, play a little bit, but they didn't tie anything up. So there's just a bunch of unanswered questions that we're never going to know. Because I just feel like the fans at this point are going to be... Nobody's going to want to do it. They're not going to get a budget that they had for the first one to even do anything remotely close if they do get a second season. They're going to be like, here's a second season and $35,000. Have fun. <laughs> like, I don't think that... I, I, that I'm just infuriated. Why Why would they Why would they do this to me? You know? So, I'm, I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to end my review on the rant of... Starts off really strong and then just goes fucking, like, stupid. I don't understand. And people were upset with the actors. I'm not upset with the actors. 
I mean, is it the best acting? No. Is it the worst? No, I've seen really bad fucking shit. It's not that bad. And also, it's Resident Evil. Have you watched the fucking cutscenes in the games? Like, it's mediocre at best. Like, they're good, but the stories aren't meant to have, like, an enormous amount of depth. Like, they are depth, but it's not going to be something that people are trying to win Emmys and Oscars and shit for. It's for the fans. I thought that it tied in very well. It just didn't it didn't it didn't hit its peak and it couldn't finish out in time maybe if they had 10 episodes instead of 8 and they focused on closing a lot of the loops that would have probably given me something different but i'm going to do my rating system we're at the point in the show where i have to do a rating system and this is the first for me during the rating system now for resident evil I'm going to choose an item that isn't from the show, but from the universe, that I thought was pretty fun, and I chose to rate the show with numbers of typewriters. You know, the typewriter is what you would use to save your game, as we said before. So, for the first time, I have two different ratings, because I couldn't... I just was very torn on how to rate the show. So, this is what I've done. For the first five episodes, episodes one through five, I give the show a seven out of ten typewriters. I was enjoying it. I like the story. I like the characters. I like the the universe. It tied in very well. <clears throat> Excuse me. But then I'm going to, for episodes six, seven, and eight, I'm going to give it a four out of ten typewriters because they just went straight to fucking hell. Straight to hell. I don't, I mean, it's just really, I, I it, it, I have no words, <laughs> clearly. It makes no sense. It didn't finish it for me. It just left me, like, not wanting more. It just left me thinking, why? Why did we not have answers? Why did you not finish this? Why was she saying this and why did this happen? It just didn't make sense. There's so many unanswered questions. Like, nothing was answered. So even if they start a season two, half the season will have to be answering all of the other questions. Like, it... it, 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 Okay, I'm going to stop ranting. (laughs) You make your own opinion of Resident Evil. Um, I still suggest you watch it because I'm genuinely curious. There's so much hate, but I want to find more people that liked it. Like, I'm so sad. Like, it was so good in the beginning. I really thought it was doing a well job. Good job. Well job. That's weird. I don't know. (laughs) Let's answer the trivia question. Let's just answer the trivia question at this point. All right, Resident Evil fans, let me know if you got it right. It's not an extremely difficult question. But I thought it was a cute, fun question for the universe. Again, the trivia question was, in the original Resident Evil games, what item is needed to save your game with the typewriter? And the answer is an ink ribbon. I almost forgot about this as well. Because in the newer games, there's typewriters, but you don't need an ink ribbon. An ink ribbon was needed to save your game, and you had to find them around the way. You know, in in different rooms, in different areas. And if you didn't have an ink ribbon, you couldn't save. So you could be getting ready for a big boss fight, and you want to, you know, load up and get ready and save your game so that if you, when you, if and when you die, because nine times out of ten, you're not beating the boss the first time, you could save your game. And if you didn't have an ink ribbon, I remember I would be like, fuck, I don't have an ink ribbon and I'm about to face the, the final boss. I can't start. My last save was two hours ago and I did so much and I don't want to go back and do it again that I would hunt around looking for fucking ink ribbons just to f- save my game. Like, I would have to, like, do a side mission for ink ribbons. I think they should bring them back if they do the right thing. Well, I mean, that's, that's kind of scary. Like, you know, ration them bitches. Use them wisely. People were taking advantage of the fact that they can just save the game whenever now. But that's that's my opinion. Um, so, again, back to the Resident Evil for Netflix. Uh, enjoyed the beginning. Think that they should have tied it up better. Um, but I think everyone should form their own opinions. If you're a fan of Resident Evil, go watch it. It's only eight episodes. That's only eight hours of your time. We've spent more doing more ridiculous shit within watching within the horror universe so eight episodes of resident evil on netflix if you're a resident evil fan go watch it and form your own opinion and as always if you like the show share it rate it comment and tell me what you like and what you don't like you can always find me on tiktok instagram and facebook at the horror within me all new and current episodes past episodes can be streamed on apple Podcasts, spotify or from the website directly at the heartwithinme.com tell your friends tell all the people all the great stuff about the show and why we love it and and that concludes 
the Resident Evil episode of The Heart Within Me. Everyone enjoy the rest of your Sunday, and I will see you all next week. Stay spooky. Mm-hmm.